All right, guys, Stephen Benoon here with Israeli News Live, and I have Brother Greg Renshin on with me. And as always, it is a privilege and, and wonderful, Brother Greg, to have you on here. So thank you for, for joining me tonight. And uh, I know you have been right here in the heart of one of the worst tragedies here on the planet. What happened in North Carolina, Brother Greg? Can you share a little bit about what you guys have gone through? Yeah. I, first of all, what happened was, it was my house was built. When I had it built, I had it built to hurricane specification. And never knowing that I was going to need it. And everybody thought I was crazy for spending that money. So when I looked out the door, I seen a tornado, number one. They came down and jumped over all of us and came down on the other side. And, and, but everybody else, it was total destruction. It was more than catastrophic. I-40 won't be fixed for years. They're going to have to reroute it. And mm. the wind was blowing so hard that the tops of the trees were touching the ground. And it made me a little bit nervous, you know, but nothing happened to me but when it was all over it was like a, a war zone massacre room well, we i couldn't even get out of my driveway because all the telephone poles and trees that were laying in the road and there's a lot of people lost their lives my neighbor um her son works for an electrical company and they went to remove debris and when they moved uh, the debris off the lake dozens of bodies floated up and they pulled him in, and he said that when he got there, there was a bunch of naked children that ran to his truck for help, wondering where their mom was. And he, he loaded them up in the truck and looked around, and there was bodies laying everywhere. Mm. It just came hard and fast. And here's a story, too. There was one woman who said, who lost her children? and watched him die. But she said, my seven-year-old seen the wall of water coming and waved at me and never whimpered or said mommy or anything. But he said, save me, Jesus, 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 Jesus. She said, and the water swept them all away and killed them. And she said, I wasn't sad, I was proud. Mm. Of course, she's grief. She's grief stricken. You know, yeah. everybody I talk to is grief stricken. Um, there's so many people who lost family members. It's unbelievable. You know, I mean, we're, this is my home. We are mountain people, and so this is my home. And so everybody knows everybody. And you know, I know a lot of people that died. One guy down the road here had a tree fall on his single wide and chopped his head off. Oh my gosh, bro! Yeah. And so, and this is right down the road. So me and my neighbor, Carolyn Poindexter, we went out for a little ride and was looking at the destruction. It was just awful. It was awful. And all the, uh, the restaurants here, this is how mountain people come together. The restaurants here didn't throw nothing out. They cooked it all up and gave it away for donations. Mm. They cooked all, everything they had instead of throwing it out so the people could eat. Because we were blocked out of getting to town. I couldn't get there, but I lost everything I had. I went on a pretty much a five-day fast. I lost so much weight. And it was so hot in here. It was in the 80s, you know, 88, 90 degrees inside the house. And I just sat here sweating and, and just, it was so bad I couldn't move. I mean, I was, it was making me sick. I didn't have my meds. There was no way of getting them. Um, Walmart is only taking cash. They're not taking cards. And just about everywhere, is. they're not taking cards. They're, because the uh, the system, I guess, is still down for the cards. Right. Cash on everywhere. Well, thank God, you know, that we have cash machines that we can get out of our bank. But, you know, when you go shopping for food, and when you, when you go to Walmart, there's nothing left. Wow. Yeah, but, and you know that the um, 
the uh, ports are on strike. Hmm. The ports will everything is delivered food no is they're on strike right now and biden and all of them are backing them biden and kamala are backing the strikers and the reason the guy's striking the one that owned the support said the reason he's on strike is because during covid he was promised from the biden administration that he would get his money to just get it shipped in here and so he gave him credit up into the billions and they never paid the bill. And now we have a hurricane that came through here, and we can't get goods in here now. So I talked to a lady this morning that knows a helicopter pilot. So I'm working out the coordinates because we don't know where the no-fly zones are here because National Guard's here. And so we've got to figure that out. Brother, Ga- to drop Brother Gary, can you share a little bit about uh, the National Guard, and, and of course, now they're helping to rescue. But, you know, we played, Yana and I played a, a young man. Uh, and, of course, the video, and, and understandably so, you hear him. He's getting ready to try to tell the people what's going on. He's trying, he's having a hard time gain, uh, gaining composure. And when he finally does... He lets loose. I mean, every curse word you could think of comes out of him. But, you know, I don't I can't blame the guy. He was wanting to know where where the 101st was, where he said that they were stuck at their bases. They weren't allowed to go find their loved ones. He said their children, no doubt, dead in many cases. Um, He just talked just like what you're describing now. I mean, you know. Brother Greg, when I hear you describe this, you remind me of myself uh, in a lot of ways because you've seen so much horror in your life already. Uh, I've seen many people killed in my life. Uh, it's very, very hardening, very sad, but it also, you kind of just, something changes within you when you've had to deal with so much death in your life. It does. It does. You become naturally cold to it that's a natural feeling and i think it's a blessing by god you feel bad but you got to bring the family's closure so when you see these bodies you have to do that that's a job that has to be done right Right. and you know what i'm saying so it it, it does help in, in being able to help those that are in that kind of a shock at that moment because you know what it's like. I mean, I still to this day remember the first person that I ever dealt with and his head rolled off into my arms uh, as I picked him up. You know, it's a shock that will never leave you as long as you live. But then you begin to, you know, when you've dealt with this so much in life, then you're able to help people that are going through that tragedy to get through it because you've been there, so you're not as shocked when you're dealing with it i guess that's the best way to put it i call it righteous coldness it's something that god gives us within to not make us cold to the whole fact but to help us so that we don't get ptsd right and really people with ptsd were the ones that were doing all the rescuing and you know i i don't self-elevate i don't do that and so I did some things for people, but the main thing is, is that, you know, um, you have to have some kind of, I don't, I, the only thing I can say is it's called righteous coldness. It's, it's a righteous thing that you're doing and you have a coldness to it because if you didn't, you couldn't do it. Right. Right. So no, I, 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 I think I can really kind of understand that because. Like I said, you know, it made it later in life to where I was able to deal with it a little easier. It doesn't go away. It doesn't make it any better. The next person you see that's had a bullet hole put in their head or something like that uh, is still a traumatic event, but you're able to keep your composure. You're able to well, deal with whatever you got to deal with at that time. Imagine, imagine being the one that put the hole in his head like I did. Yeah. That really get you because at the time you're thinking, oh gosh, I just got to take him out. And, you know, you're a thousand, fifteen hundred yards away 
you take a man out and then right away it hits you that was somebody's daddy somebody's son somebody's uncle you know what i mean right. even though they just they, you know the drug dealers is what i dealt with even though they had it coming you still feel bad right you know your first kill is the hardest because when you use a 50 caliber, the head completely explodes. There's just nothing left. And when you see that through the scope, that mist of red spray go up and all the other stuff hits the ground and then he's standing there and just falls, it, it just puts something in you like, oh my God, what did I just do? Well, we have to do that. We have to do that to keep this country safe. And... You know, um, the undocumented immigrants that Biden's letting in were caught stealing at Lake Lure in a boat. They were going from house to house stealing. And they were they arrested them. There was nine of them. And they arrested all of them. And they're in our county jail right now. And probably going to be shipped out. Mm-hmm. Our, uh, one thing about these country towns, you know that song, Try That in a Small Town? Yes, yes. Well, that's a lot of truth to that. Try that in a small town. You know that. You, you're you mm-hmm. a mountain man. You know, you live in Tennessee, and the people really come together when, when they're needed. All things are put mm-hmm. aside. And so it's it's a tough thing to go through. You know, and I, I and me, FEMA called me today, wanting to come and do an inspection. They said, we have money allocated to give to you. I told them not to come, that I had no damage whatsoever, and to give that money to somebody that needs it. Amen. You know, Amen. that's what I did. Well, that's- speaking of speaking of that real quick, Brother Greg, uh, a lot of people, they'll watch the videos and never go completely all the way through an entire video from beginning to end. And I, we're going to be talking a little bit about Planet X. We're probably talking more about Dulce places like that. Uh, mm-hmm. But I do want to share with people. You do. You're you strictly. You're you're at a retirement time. You didn't have the fanciful uh, uh, lifestyle that some people get to have in life. Uh, mm-hmm. So you're dependent upon people supporting the work you do. And so I want people to know how to contact you and how to support the work you're doing. Yeah, um, it's Greg Rinch. It's R I N C H I C H. 325 Angora Drive, A-N-G-O-R-A, Bostick, North Carolina, 28018. And I have a lot of people that say, you're crazy putting your address in that stuff. Well, I have nothing to hide. And uh, I don't know if you've ever seen that movie, Wrong Turn, <laughs> or The Last House on the Left. Yes. As, as, you know, you see, you know what I'm talking about. That's what would happen if they came up here because I've got a sheriff that lives next door to me. I got a nurse coming to live up here and we have our own livestock and everything. And, um, so we're, we're okay. You know, I, I still am short because I had to pay some, I had to pay a lot of bills that I didn't see coming because of the storm, but compared to everybody else I'm blessed but I I will uh, you know anything access that I don't need I will give it away amen amen well I'm sure it'll be for a worthy cause regardless so I will put also all that in the description below and you know brother Greg a lot of times your spelling of your last name is tricky I've seen it R-I-C-H I-N-C-H but it's R-I-N-C-H I-C-H, correct? Right, right. Absolutely. That's correct. Absolutely. Well, brother, all right, let's dive into some interesting things here. I asked you a little while, uh, not too long ago, on a text message, what do you know about Planet X, if anything? And you said you actually did know some things about that. What can you share with us that you know about uh, Planet X? I know that's a very hot subject for a lot of people, and I'd like to get your uh, take on that. Okay. First of all, Planet X is behind the sun right now. Okay? 
Okay. And they say, they say there's three theories. One, that it has a 13,000-year orbit. One is a 10,000, and Zachariah Sitchin said 3,600. Well, after all my studies and what I know from being at uh, Dulcie and stuff about Planet X, and by the way, that's what the Catholics are watching with the uh, Lucifer telescope. Oh, yes. They're, well, they're trying to find it. Well, it's dark matter. Um, Planet X is made up of dark matter. And CERN is desperately trying to find out that dark matter. That's why CERN's doing what they're doing. Oh, wow. um, they're, they're actually trying to find the same dark matter. Now, in the ancient Sumerian writings, the Nibiru um, is in there, and it came, and the Anunnaki came from the planet Nibiru, which we know as reptilians. And uh, in the ancient writings, the, the gods came from that planet and said they would be back in 10,000 years. Well... I have more of a thing that it's 7,000 years. And I, I, it's hard to explain why. But anyway, I have a thing of 7,000 years, and it's behind the sun. So I think, this is just me, okay? I'm not an astrophysicist, but I am knowledgeable from the people that I met there. I think that it will be here in about 2033 it will pass by us. And and here's, here's what the Sumerians said. They said when it came, we had climate change. When it was coming close. Right. Does that not sound familiar? Exactly. And that's something I've always heard as well, is that pay attention to the weather patterns, pay attention to yep. the storm, the hurt. I was even told they won't. We won't have hurricanes. So I have to change them to uh, uh, what do they call it now? Hemicanes or no, 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 no. I'm sorry. Cyclone. Cyclone. Hyper, hyper, hypercanes. That's what they said. They'll change the yeah, name hyper to. Yeah, hypercanes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. And earthquakes will go to 8.0 and higher. Uh, you'll start yeah. seeing them like that, and then volcanoes will just become nuts. And then you have Carlos Ferrada, the Chilean astronomer, who said that there'll be a triangulated earthquake on the Earth right before it gets here, and that'll that'll be the the head of that'll be uh, between Spain and France. Uh, the bottom left corner will be down in Chile, and the bottom right corner of the triangulation will be at Indonesia area, and I forget which country he mentioned, but still the Indonesian islands down in that area there. So right. just to throw some thoughts out there, but you're sharing things I've not heard before, so continue on, Brother Greg. Okay, so <clears throat> the Sumerians found out that the Earth was round because of Nibiru. Um, for an example, if you take a baseball and throw it, what does it do? If you drop it, it drops straight to the ground. If you throw it, it curves. It curves with the gravity. And when you're in an airplane, you know as well as I do, and I'm coming up to Planet X about this, that the flat Earth theory does not work. Because even in, when you're in an airplane, you can see the curvature of the Earth, and that's only 40,000 feet. Right. So, you know, you know, I, I just can't support the flat Earth theory because when you throw, look, look at the, even the space shuttle traveling at 17,000 miles an hour can't escape the curvature of the Earth. It rotates around it because it's round. Why would God make a, make, you know, he would fall off the edge. There would be an edge and there is no edge. You know, I only tell, I used to tell my son, when we were at the beach, you're at the edge of the United States. You're at the very edge. And so they found out that it was round because uh, in the ancient Sumerian text, they were 
um, going back and forth about it being flat or round, and it was round, and they were told this. They called them gods. They were told this by the gods from Nibiru. That they came, when, when it came, they came. And they were reptilians. And, um, I mean, I've studied a lot about this. I uh, really have. So um, what I'm telling you is fact. You can look it up yourself. I I can tell you have studied it. And I am on the edge of my seat, literally just fascinated at listening. So please continue. Yeah. So Nibiru is behind the sun right now. And I know that the Lucifer Telescope at Mount Graham, it's a Catholic zone. And I don't have nothing against Catholics, believe me. I just, um, they, they're paganism, they're paganists. And I'm talking about the clergy. No, you know, I'm talking about the I understand, people. I understand. Okay, they're paganists. And so um, the Pope said that, because uh, um, Tom Horn, you knew Tom Horn, didn't you? I, I did not know him personally. Uh, but I knew of him, yes. Okay, well, I knew Tom Horn. And Tom Horn said that um, that uh, Nibiru, he even agreed with me that Nibiru was a planet of the reptilians. Now, I don't believe in gravity. I believe in an electric universe. I think Tesla had it right more than um, Einstein. But regardless, that's neither here nor there. But the thing that proved it to me was when I was at Dulce, I asked about that specifically to several scientists, and they told me the baseball theory. You throw a ball, and if it goes around the world, it's going around. Because it's already, it's already on the trajectory of a curve when you throw it. Right. Well... The space shuttle 17,000 miles an hour and still can't escape that curve. It goes around and around and around. And I know that people say, well, blah, blah, you know, this and that. Look, we got pictures. The only thing that's not round are asteroids. Everything else is round. And if you look at most of the galaxies um, that surround the Nibiru, you can see where they had... Um, an electric pull to them because every time that Nibiru went through them, there was upheaval in the galaxies. So Nibiru has a strong, whether it's magnetic or electric field. And the first thing that the Sumerians said was we had climate change. We had um, the floods, earthquakes, um, and all these things after when Nibiru came. And the gods told them that they had to leave lest the planet get destroyed. Wow. Now, this is Sumerian text, you know what I mean? And you know, the Sumerians were the first ones to invent writing language. <laughs> and the other thing that was fascinating is that when, when archaeologists say dig up these old civilizations, they are amazed at the accuracy that they're able to depict continents on the earth. Exactly. And somebody had to tell them that. And wow. so it's, it's been around seven to 10,000 years, and now it's behind the sun. You know, I think that we've got, and a friend of mine, very, cl- very, very, very close friend of mine, who I care about a lot. We talked about it today. And, um, you know, God doesn't change. Yeshua stays the same all the time and he made the earth round and he made it round for a reason if it was flat we would have utter destruction when new Peru came because it would do a polar flick and they were also told you know just like the bible says that the stars of heaven will fall yes it because the earth could be okay now i'm just going by their text and a couple of scientists I knew, that the Earth was wobbling to and fro now, that it was going to do a complete polar shift and flip, and it will look like the stars of heaven are falling. 
when it clicks. Oh, wow. I never even yeah. thought about that before. Yeah, and so it'll look like the stars of heaven are falling, and what'll happen is there'll be a, a vacuum um, go through it, which will cause everything to fast freeze because the, the air from space will invade a path, just a path. But when it comes, the pull of it's going to cause a great um, asteroid to come and hit Babylon. You know, um, uh, the Bible says that um, um, a millstone was thrown in the middle of her and she was no more at all. Right, right. That comes from Nibiru. So wow. you can look at the end times, you know, nobody knows. And it's just a guess of mine. But I'm thinking 2033 is going to be it. Well, 2033 when is going to be would, it. When I would get uh, estimates uh, from from different sources that I had, they would always say 2030, the earliest. So it's interesting that you bring up 2033. And, uh, yeah. and, and everybody out there is saying, oh, no, 2024 or 20 this or... You know, this one scientist gave me this memory stick that I that I ended up letting Paul Bagley have, and uh, and on there he had 2024, and uh, and so that really became a new date setter. Uh, I would I used to I would say that it says 2024, but I'd always tell people I said my own source tells me 2030. Is uh, well, they and he said they don't even know for sure. He said the Catholics are closer, but when you mention this thing about dark matter, wow, what a game changer! Right. Yes, that's a game changer because dark matter is interdimensional and only oh can be my seen gosh, with... Greg. Oh my gosh, that's what the one guy would tell me too. He would say that, he would say that. He said it, it runs in between the ether from one dimension to another. He said that's why we can't never tell for sure where it's at. That's exactly right. It goes in and out. And it can appear one day and be gone the next because it, it's in, interdimensional. The reptilians, I think, now, none of this, I can't, you know, just like me being at Dulce and all this. Now, you can't prove that you were there. You think that they're going to let me carry the file cabinet on my back when I leave? I don't think so. You know, they don't no. care what you say because they say, you know, my, my exit interview when I left was go ahead and tell a lot because they know that nobody's going to believe it. And it, it, it astounds me to this day and aggravates me that people, I wish somebody from there would tell us what's going on. I wish somebody did. And then when you do, you're crazy. Yeah. Because what you've seen is actually is crazy. But Nibiru, or Planet X, is an interdimensional planet. Now, it's sitting behind the sun right now. That's a fact, an absolute fact. I talked to a couple scientists that I know. And um, that dark matter, it's CERN that they're trying to create the, I think it's called the Hebon, the Hebon um, particle, the God particle. Yes. The reason they're wanting that God particle, it's not a particle. See, every one of these collisions, let me start here. They use 100 billion protons to collide to get 50 of them to hit. It's a speed of light. 100 billion to get 50 of them to collide. And the collision happens in a tube that's as thin as your hair. It's mm. as thin as your hair. If you pluck the hair out, that's how thin that tube is. And that's where they collide at. And then they've got a machine that calculates the collision. The collider was eventually was built to collide particles to determine the yield of the nuclear bomb without exploding it. And then they found out that it ripped the veil. Well, they were told <clears throat> that the Anunnaki were coming back. And they are. They're going to come up with Planet X. Now, you know, we say, and, and we're probably right, around, I say 7,000 years, but they say 10. Let's just go with the 10,000-year theory. One guy says 13,000 years. 
Zachariah Sitchin said 3,600 years, but I tend to believe on the 7,000th year because the seventh day is when Jesus is going to come. And I think that it's actually going to be 2033 and a half because that's when Jesus died. And his his fulfillment of of his being a lot, you know, his ministry was cut up at 33 and a half. So that meant that he was only half done. And the final part of the ministry will happen on the seventh day, which we know is Saturday. And so I tend to think it's going to be 23, 2033 in six months. Now, I'm not a prophet. Don't claim to be one. I'm just telling you the facts that I know from the experience I had. I was telling a friend today that I had a um, a scientist. I was asking all the time questions because he was working on uh, trying to figure out what anti-gravity was. And one day he told me, I told him that I only had a GED and he was astonished. He said, you mean you only got a GED and you understand all this physics? I'm telling you, I said, yeah, it's not that hard. And so he told me, he said, I want to take you somewhere. And he took me into a place that had a craft in it, okay, a flying saucer. And it was hovering off the ground about eight feet and just sitting there, making, make not making a sound. He said, walk under it. And I was scared to, but I did. And my hair stood straight up. What does that tell you? Wow. Electric universe. Electric is how they move. And the way they do it is, they have a way of manipulating time and space by bending it. And they, they open up a cone of nothingness in front of them. You know, they just open up the air into space and they fall through it. That's how they disappear so quick. They fall through it. Well, that's what Nibiru is doing. That's what Planet X does. It opens up, but somebody has to be on there to know what to do. And it is the Anunnaki or the reptilians. They are there. I promise you. They're on there. And, uh, you know, uh, you've heard, um, uh, what was the name of that uh, show? Uh, Ancient Aliens? Yes. They got some of it right. They're pretty close on the Anunnaki. The rest of it's all BS. But, excuse me. I have heartburn today. That's but okay. the Anunnaki are um, are dangerous criminals, is what they are. They're the dangerous of the all. They're the ones that are running the world. And they've been doing it from Nibiru. And we have been picking up signals from Nibiru. And that's why when we capture a, a UFO, we capture it. We keep the data because... They were sending us frequencies that were decoded by the binary code. Right. And and it actually told them that they were coming back and that they were on Planet X. So Planet X is a very dangerous thing. And when it comes around, that's when the polar shift will probably happen. You know, the shit, the poles shift all the time. You know that, don't you? The magnetic yeah. part of it. Yes. But I'm talking about a literal shift to flip the earth. That And that's what will create such massive winds. And that's what causes the ocean to suddenly sweep in on the lands is because when right. the earth goes to make that sudden shift and you've already got the earth spinning at over a thousand miles an hour, which by the way, this is why people that believe in a flat earth, they don't want to hear this because... To them, I, I never will forget, Greg, I said one time to people when I was worried about these asteroids and stuff like that, and they kept writing me, Brother Steve, you know, you're on a flat earth, there is no asteroids, it's just a dome above you. So I said one day, I said, all right, look. All right, so let's just say it this way then. If your dome is going to crack up and fall in on your heads, you need to be aware the dome is cracking up, okay? Uh, you yeah. know, I mean... Because the thing is, is people are so gullible to believe in such nonsense 
And I know that yeah, they're yeah. trying to say it biblical, and I've never got into the debate out of just trying to be kind to people, but you know, Brother right. Greg, That's what one, I do too. one day maybe I really should, because they're taking scriptures and they're totally, they don't understand the language, and then they try to make it say something that it doesn't say. Well, you know, the Catholics are the Catholic clergy. Now, I'm not talking about Catholic people. They're, right, no, I understand. I'm family, they're Catholics, but... The clergy screwed everything up. They gave us the wrong Sabbath day. They came up with the pagan holidays so they oh, could yeah. make money on Christmas and all these other things. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And it was it was the um, the Catholic clergy is the one who screwed everything up. And so most people that go to church have been told a lie, an absolute lie. You know, mm. um, the verse. You know, the Torah is the um, foreseeing of Jesus. And the New Testament is the revealing of Jesus. Right. So that's why I've been studying the Torah, because there's a lot in there to learn. And there's, um, you know, I believe in Jesus, you know, Yeshua. Amen. And and, and that, that he is my commander. I seen a shirt the other day that said, um, I am a warrior of God. Jesus Christ is my commander, and the Bible is the code of my conduct. And I am a warrior, and prayer and the full armor of God are the weapons of my warfare. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. So, but this Planet X is no joke. And, you know, I really do believe that the Earth's going to flip off its axis. She's going to flip. It just all makes sense. I mean, it's biblical to say that. And no asteroids, give me a break. Come on. If you had a flat a, a, a flat uh, Earth and an asteroid were to hit, it would, that would be the end of the whole Earth. But because the Earth is round, it has to spread and fall down. And and, and God knew that. He knew that, you know, when he created it. It helps that, them burn yeah. up in the atmosphere because they get caught up in there and then they get drugged into that circle coming down. Mm -hmm. I've seen, you know, we must have, had a, I know we did. I, I didn't know it was coming at the time, but uh, about two weeks ago, maybe three weeks ago, uh, an asteroid shower, we were going through one. And I, me and my daughter walked outside, and first thing we did, we saw a huge, big old bright light come flying down out of the sky. She saw it, I saw it. We we walked a little bit further, then there went another one. Then we were like, my goodness. Then we turned around, we're coming back towards us, and then a big, beautiful green, yellowish color one shot yeah, across the that. sky. And I'm like, yeah. yes, I've never seen so many in all my life. But you know what? These are all signs from God. Yeah. He said, the signs in the heavens yeah. and the earth. Yeah. You know, and, and you know, we don't struggle with flesh and blood. What did he say? That's right. As Paul said, we, with principal, and that's actually archons in the Greek language. Yeah. That word is, you're struggling against archons. Which to me yeah. ain't nothing more than a bunch of devils and a bunch of human or bodies that that are reptilian or whatever else you want to have. Right. Well, these UFOs hang out in the second heavens, and the Bible clearly tells you about them because sure. the, in, in 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 Ephesians it says you not wrestle against flesh and blood, but in the end he goes, but spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Yes. So these are not uh, things that come from another star system. They're evil entities. They're dark. And they can't wait till the arrival of Nibiru because those, that's their bosses, you know. And when, when Nibiru comes by, I believe that we're going to have a polar shift. Like we're going to have something like we've never seen, the tides and all this and that. I'm just glad I live where I do up high yes. because I, I just know, you know, but we know that the earth is not going to get flooded again because God said he would never do that again. 
Nope, but, but it will. It don't mean that it ain't gonna get hit pretty doggone hard. And I've heard mm -hmm. intel communities say it moved 200 miles inland. Yeah, and I'm more than that. And so, mm -hmm. what I'm saying is, is he also says that another angel threw a great millstone down. That's an asteroid. Yes. Okay. So, how can the flat Earth people say? that there's no asteroid when God says that. They're denying the Bible completely when they say that. There's two two places in the Bible that if all you knew was John 3.16 and Ephesians 6, you could live in, in, in harmony with God. If that's all the two pages that you had, you Amen. could live with harmony with God. Because he tells you, what to wear and how to fight. And then when you've done all the stand, stand I, I there, myself, stand there for it. That's yeah, right. I picture myself leaning into that hurricane, leaning into the wind and letting it blow by. Mm. I've been through a lot of them. I was through, I went through Camille. I was a little boy at the time, but I actually still remember it to this day. Uh, oh yeah. You know, and they claim that one had 200 mile an hour winds. Can you imagine that? Well, you know, here's the thing about this Helene. This is what blows me away. Okay. When the, the storm, you know, when they make landfall, they break up. Yes. And turn into that thing held up, storm. though, all the way up. So that thing had all to be a to powerful a storm. Two. It was a Category 2 when the eye came over here. That tells me it was not no 4 when it hit Florida. That thing had to be a 5 or above. Yeah. And so... I think that Harp had a lot to do with that. And I think, and this is the conspiracy theory I'm going to tell you, I think the Democrats were part of it. Because mm -hmm. from what I understand, if there's a tragedy, the president can stay in until it's over. Well, that, you so, know, they're doing everything they can. <clears throat> and I've heard that that would happen to try to make sure that they don't lose control of power. All the way down to a civil war. And I was told the other day by a friend of mine, there's 1.2 million Chinese illegally in this country, and they're all of fighting age, ready for fighting, uh, that they would actually be the ones that they put blue helmets on in the event we right. have an unrest in this country, that they already they got the like Chinese NATO. in place. Yeah. So they look like they're NATO. Yeah. And Think of that. I think, I think that the next thing that's going to happen because I'm worried about Alaska. But the next thing that happened, I think, is the San Andreas Fault is going to slip in California. Mm. Wow. Especially when, especially when Nibru comes by. And it's already, did you know that the San Andreas Fault by the government has nuclear weapons down in it to make it happen? Wow. That I did not know. Yeah. They have weapons down in it to make it happen. So, Good night. Yeah, yeah, they. You got some quackos out there, don't you, brother? Yeah, and I've known it for years and years and years. And you know, when I, the reason I didn't talk about it until 2005, my experience is because I would tell some friends, you know, this now, you crazy idiot, you know. You're, you're hallucinating. You had too much to drink or something. And so I waited. And one day I thought, I guess you should have put it on my mind. You know, you need to tell people what's coming. Because it is coming and they can't stop it. All, you know, these all these rich people that are dying, isn't that funny? Billionaires, all their money. And they couldn't buy one more second of time. Yep. Brother Greg, I got a question for you, because I know a lot of people, they love it when you talk about the alien side of things, too. But I have heard a lot of talk that there is going to be a situation where um, the aliens are going to come back. Uh, some people have said 2026. Uh, and they're, but they're going to come, they said, after we've been devastated by war and famine and, and pestilence, whether that be, well, you know what that means. I can't really say it because we'll yeah. be on YouTube here, but, you know, 
uh, but because of that, that they will come and they will claim that they have the cure for everything and the way to resolve our woes. Uh, yeah, have and you they, ever and they will be able to, They'll be able to pull that off, too. And I've, I've also heard it's a lot like that movie uh, called V. You know, they had that back in the 80s, and then they came out again, I think, in 2015 with another series of that, uh, the V movie there. And they said it would be a lot like that. Suddenly these spacecraft yeah. will show up, and they'll claim that they're here to be our saviors. Yeah, you're, you're exactly right. They're going to, that's going to be the strong delusion. I believe. Now, there's two things to the strong delusion. One of the, there's, you know, God speaks twice, he says in the Bible, because man perceives it not the first time. And so everything he says has two meanings, a spiritual meaning and a literal meaning. And I believe um, during the time that the UFOs come back, that that is one delusion and the other delusion is, I think, is people fighting over the rapture. Well, I can, I can you know. see that. I can certainly see that as one of the biggest hot topics of the day. Um, you know, and yet I search all kinds of ancient documents, and it would probably really shake people up to know the truth. And... Um, you know, but, you know, hey, you know, look, it's going to be a strong delusion that people would believe a lie and be damned by it. That's correct. Mm. Well. And, and one of the strong delusions is, is praying to the Virgin Mary. And I, like I said, I don't dislike, you know, there's going to be a lot of, I think there's going to be some people that were um, Catholics to go to heaven that were good people and but they've been lied to. Yeah. They've absolutely been lied to. And, you know, why would why would the Vatican have a telescope that they thought? See, they fought tooth and nail against the Indians to get Mount Grant and won. It wasn't that the Indians were afraid of giving up their, their land. They were afraid because Mount Grant sits on a porthole. Now, these Indians... And the way they opened up these portholes was with flutes. Wow. A, mm. a certain frequency that came out of the flute. And only certain um, chiefs and things had the power to do that, that knew the frequency. And that's how they opened it. That's why you see on the side of rocks those swirls. Those are all portholes that can be opened with a flute. Mm. In other words, it's all... It's all, um, it's all frequency. And, you know, they want um, to know the God particle because they want to know what frequency he spoke that in so they could speak it. Mm -mm. Imagine see, that. Imagine that. Yeah. And they're, um, I don't care what they tell you. And they're, oh, we're not doing this. We're not open. But yes, they are. Yes, they are. They are doing it. And they're building a bigger one that's 100 kilometers right now as we speak around the one that the Hadron Collider is. They're doing it in the tunnels. They're 100 feet deep. And they're doing it in the tunnels, and they're going to build one around that one that's 100 kilometers instead of 17 kilometers or 27 kilometers. Mm -hmm. So they're up to something. And, and they, they're really worried about, um, well, you know, even um, Stephen Hawking, who was a atheist, said that he didn't think that anything good would come through there. You know, and they've already ripped the veil. Oh, yes. And, and, and they're, they're coming through because we're, we're seeing it now. Look at the war in Israel. That's a satanic war. Yes. Yes, it you is. Know? And, and they're never going to destroy Israel completely. It'll never happen. God won't let it happen. And I really think um, that we need to pray for Israel, you know, that, um, that we can get this hashed out pretty quick. Because, and, and I believe Trump can do it. I believe he can. 
But we don't know who's going to get in. We don't know how that's going to fall into place. And so we have to go. You know, what I tell people is don't listen to me. Keep us close to the rest of the two Yes, that is so true, Brother Gary. So I'll tell you what, I know I've kept you for a long time, brother, but I certainly appreciate you taking the time out to talk to us tonight. And uh, and we do. People need to pray for Israel. You need to pray for uh, even these little Palestinian people there that so many have been killed there as well. Uh, every life is life and it doesn't matter which side it's on as my wife has often said even about Israel she says look many of these people that are Israelis today they're born there that's their country as well you know so she yeah. said they have a right to be there too just like the Palestinians do uh, yeah, we need to pray for everybody. Yes, that's exactly the way she'll put it too. You know, we need to pray for them all. So, yeah, brother the Greg, are coming to Christ left and right. That's right. And by the way, Iran has 1.3 million Christians. Uh, yeah. Lebanon yeah. has over two million Christians. So, uh, so just keep in mind, we have Christian brothers. I got, I got a. Uh, some friends that watch our broadcast live in Beirut. So, anyway, yeah. brother, we're going to wrap it up tonight. Can you share with the people once more how they can support uh, support what you're doing and uh, how they can reach out to you? Most certainly. Um, it's Greg Rinchich and R I N C H I C H, three twenty five Angora Drive. A-N-G-O-R-A, Drive, Bostic, B-O-S-T-I-C, North Carolina, 28018. Amen. And we'll have that in the description for you as well. So in case you forget, you can look it up there. God bless yeah. you. Thank you guys for listening. Stephen Benin with Israeli News Live with Brother Greg Ranchich. And uh, we certainly appreciate it. We'll come it. back later. I know a little bit more still. Oh, about I do want to do it again. And we'll do it sooner than later this time around. So, yeah. All right, guys.